You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is runth over. Our second reading is from the book of Revelations, chapter 7. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation and from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated at the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell to their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen. Blessed in glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might to be our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white? And where have they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, They are who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and have made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night without, within his temple. And and the, and the one who is seated at the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more. They will thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb is the center of the throne. For the, the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me. But you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Today is Good Shepherd Sunday, Mother's Day, and a day in which we commemorate Julian of Norwich, a 14th century nun, actually a mystic. A mystic is someone who through prayer and contemplation has an awareness of God's presence. She's famous, among other messages, for describing the mothering qualities of God in Christ. God is our mother, she's famous for proclaiming. Jesus is our mother as well. There was a day when, believe it or not, a preacher in a Protestant congregation would have been terrified 
to cite Julian, uh, to, to, to somehow say you know, that God is our mother, because literalists among in congregations would say, doesn't Jesus call God Father? Just like in our, our passage we read today, as if all our names for God are not metaphors, except for our experience of the presence of God in Jesus in the sacraments, in the word and the sacraments, except for those, remember Jesus said no one has ever seen God uh, except the Son, but nobody has ever seen God. So, so all our words for God are metaphors. Besides, I'm a little too old to be terrified at this point to share with you what I believe, that God fathers and mothers us. But mothers us on this Mother's Day we can share in a tender and compassionate way. Jesus says, God mothers us like a hen gathering her chicks under her wing. Of course, that's a metaphor, right? But, but he uses that metaphor. He compared God to a woman looking for a lost coin as if it was a lost child in a, in a supermarket, right? Or, or a retail store where they would crawl under the uh, clothing. Or a woman pleading for health for her child. Julian of Norwich liked to describe this as God's holding us in God's hand, as if God were gently holding an acorn in the palm of God's hand. A lovely and tender image. Just think as we, we all like to sing, remember as children, God has the whole world in God's hand, right? We use the, another pronoun, right? I'm, I'm being careful here. It gives one a sense of security and care to know that one is held in love by God. Now it's always dangerous to assume that everyone has experienced mothering in the same way that the preacher has or one has. But when I think of my mother on this day, and I think the, our techies are going to put uh, uh, a picture of her up there and uh, uh, also of my, my father uh, now or later on. But when I, when I think of my mother on this day, she represented a marvelous balance with my stern pastor, Prussian father, who had his own sensitivities, see him up there, uh, it still scares me a little bit, uh, uh, who had his own deep sensitivities and loved us with great compassion, but was so committed to our doing well and doing everything right as kids that he found it hard to tolerate our mistakes as children and our decisions as adults. Add to that that he was a war veteran, saw so many young men die, and a refugee. Oftentimes, growing up, it was like walking on eggshells around him. A loud noise would terrify him. My mother on the other side accepted us with radical acceptance. Let me say that again. My mother accepted us with radical acceptance. There was nothing, and I mean nothing, that we could do or would do that would alienate us from her. Her ministry was one of listening and modeling and learning from us. When any of us came home from school or work she would listen intently as if her life depended upon what you would say. You never gave a short answer to, to my mother, like, how was school? We did nothing. You, you, you didn't say that to my mother. You know, or how was your day? Fine. You know, my mother didn't accept that. And if she knew you had a bad day, she'd find a time to do her ministry later in the day, and she would always give one valuable feedback. By listening, she often understood our troubles better than we ourselves, and she understood us better than ourselves. By the way, she had 16 kids, so, you know, she, she had a lot to base things on. I was reminded of the next two stories I'm going to tell 
for today as Jesus is scolding the Jewish folks around him for not accepting him and then immediately turning around and saying, I am the good shepherd. I recall that once as an adult, my mother was scolding me, and she could scold, for, for, for a public position that the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America had taken. She wasn't perfect, she was human. She was born in 1908, so, so history was moving fast for her. And after a few minutes of scolding, she caught me completely off guard with these simple words. Philip, I know you, you know I love you. The, the two, there was no connection to the two at all, except that she was hollering on the phone, right? I was an adult, part of the, part of the church that she was upset about, but then she was so afraid, you get the point, right? Of that there might be some kind of an alienation, she said, Philip, you know I love you, right? That has accompanied me through much of my life. And I thought of it when, when, I, when we recited, the, and I prepared and, and saw the, the 23rd Psalm, your rod and your staff, so she was scolding me, right? They comfort me. Isn't that an interesting juxtaposition of words, right? Your rod and your staff of the shepherd, they comfort me. A shepherd has a staff with a crook that's a little, uh, the little circle, up the half circle up at the end, uh, to keep the sheep in a herd, and especially the ones that wander off, right? Uh, they have to be brought back. But then Jesus goes on to say, the shepherd, the, the sheep know the voice of the shepherd and follow. Another story that reminded me of, of this interaction between Jesus and those around him. When I had to give a trial public lecture for the Lutheran uh, Seminary, where Kevin and Allie uh, go, go to seminary now, uh, this Kevin, after I had lost out in seven searches, not seven, five other searches, uh, you know, to, 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 uh, to uh, get a, a position as a teacher, you know, I wound up being there about uh, 30 years, but in, but in five different positions, I was the fi one of the finalists, right, and lost out each time. Um, and so now I'm giving a public lecture uh, to, to get the, the job as a, as a professor there, uh, and it was Valentine's Day, the day that I was supposed to give the lecture. And my mother, who never sent Valentine's cards, never sent Valentine's to us. We had to send them to her, right? But, but she never sent them to us. But on that particular year, and I think it was because uh, she, know, she knew I'd been turned down five times already, she sent me this gushy, over-the-top Valentine's Day card. You know the ones that are all red and pink and some white in there? And, you know, it has so many folds, she had to pay extra postage, maybe triple postage, right? Uh, and I took a risk. And in front of this assembly, you know, of professors and seminarians, right, I circulated that, that gushy card. Had nothing to do with my presentation. Um, I got the job. <laughs> we all knew that our dad loved us, but one had to exegete between the lines amidst what seemed oppressive goals that he had for us that were often uncompromising and seemed unforgiving. And in the intersecting dynamic and contrast of those forms of love, we grow and then make our own mistakes parenting, right? So in some sense, you know, I grew up with sort of law and gospel, right, um, it, it, between two parents. When you've experienced good mothering, regardless of gender, and Brian posted it so well, we all have mother figures in our lives too, right? It's not just a birth mother. So whether it's from a, a, a birth mother or not, then as we will soon sing, the words ring true. Mothering spirit, 
nurturing one. In arms of patience hold me close, so that in faith I root and grow until I flower, until I know. Today we lift up the tender compassion of our mother in God, who accepts us even when we are unacceptable. Who accepts us even when we are unacceptable. Who holds us like an acorn in God's hand. And to quote Julian of Norwich once again, promises us that all manner of things will be well. All manner of things will be well. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Gentle shepherd, enable your church to respond to the voice of Jesus. Give us unfailing trust, unafraid to join in Jesus' work of renewing all things. God, in your mercy. Feed your people at the table of creation. Prepare a safe place for those whose environments are dangerous or unhealthy, especially those making difficult journeys. Prosper your creation for the sake of every living thing. God, in your mercy. Warm the hearts of all who celebrate and all who mourn on Mother's Day. Accompany those yearning to be mothers. Help us to heal from broken family relationships 
and open us to receive your nurturing love from all who serve mothering roles in our lives. God, in your mercy. Today we celebrate Mother's Day. While we aren't all mothers, all of us have mothers. Let us rejoice in our memories as we recognize all who are mothers, those who hope to become mothers, and those who through their professions mother children every day. For those who mourn their mothers, give them acceptance. For those estranged from their mothers, lead them towards reconciliation. And let us show our appreciation to all mothers every day. God in your mercy. Seek out those who weep while they await healing or consolation, especially Jeff, Akiko, Hiro, Teddy, Suzanne, Heidi, Jennifer, Ann, Pat, Ruth, the family of Marie, the family of Pat, and all those who we mention on our lips and in our hearts. Set people in their path who can provide the care they need and wipe away every tear from their eyes. God in your mercy. Inspire the words of prophets and saints who employ an innovative imagery to stretch our understanding, as did Julian of Norwich, whom we commemorate today. Send Christ to instruct us with motherly care. God in your mercy. Enfold us in the great multitude of saints from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages. Wash us in your saving grace every day, guiding us to your waters of life. God, in your mercy. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share with one another the peace of Christ. To uh, invite Rebecca and the children to come forward just for a, a project that came out of the Sunday school. And while they're Coming up, I want to recognize Bishop Horn and his wife, who are here. Thank you for being being with us. Good morning. Um, I'm here to announce that we have started Children's Sunday School in person again. Um, this is our third week of doing it now. We learned about Jonah and the whale slash big fish this morning. Um, so what, what the children did was we drew a big whale and then um, TJ drew his whole body um, and things that he liked. Um, Emily did the tail and we had um, Addie talk about how she likes to do ballet and tap and then there's Eleanor in my hands there. So it's showing, um, representing how we can be like Jonah and be inside the whale. Um, we also had a little activity where we learned some fish and whale facts and human facts. But um, we are continuing our Sunday school through the month of May. We are ending it on June 5th with our annual flower planting. There's something in the bulletin about donating flowers. We'd love for everybody of all ages to show up for that. And then this was kind of a soft opening for Sunday school in the fall. Um, we're doing the whole big shebang. So we'll have our rally day and really get back into it after COVID. Um, this is for pre-K through fifth grade, and we always need teenage helpers. Um, Eleanor and Emily helped out during class today, so all ages. We hold it in the um, classrooms one, two, and three by the back door. We have a small opening, and then we learn about our different stories of the Bible. So if you have children, grandchildren, friends, please join us for the month of May, and then plan on it in the fall. Thank you, helpers, for showing your beautiful artwork. That is one big whale. Thank you. Just a couple of uh, 
things. One is that um, Taffy Shea uh, shared with me that Marie Hartley, who passed away, and we'll remember this week, made so many things that are around, around here. So our giving to the church is, is done in multiple uh, ways. And I thought of that as we heard our first lesson, right, of uh, Dorcas, who uh, made so many things. But Taffy just wanted us to remember that so many things that we admire uh, Marie made. There is a birthday among us. Birthday child, will you please stand up, Kevin? <laughs> For those of you who haven't been around you know, for, for a while during COVID, Kevin will be our intern next year. Uh, from uh, June 15, right? He, he's gonna take a couple weeks off at the beginning of June, uh, and, and then he'll be with us for, for a year. Uh, Allie will be doing what's called clinical pastoral education, uh, which is a special uh, a program. Uh, and we'll have another uh, uh, student who will be helping us with the, with the Sunday school. Um, it happens to be Victoria, you know, related to uh, Kevin, uh, that, uh, uh, Jackie, right, and, and David. So we're, um, uh, we're looking forward to uh, the fall, as, as Rebecca uh, announced. But Kevin will be with us in the summer already.
Merciful God, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hills were gathered together to become one bread, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. Let us give thanks for the word of God. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen.
that. 